I pray that you've come to our broadcast with an open heart, ready to receive everything that God has for you today. Wherever you are, let's just stand it as we go before God in prayer. Hallelujah. Father God, we thank you on today for your love, your kindness, for your presence, Father God. We thank you for all that you are in our lives and everything that you're doing, Father God. We thank you for your grace and your mercy, Father God. We thank you for loving us, Father God, with an everlasting love. Father God, we thank you for always speaking good things over us, Father God. We thank you for all that you're doing, Father God. You're so worthy, Father. You're so amazing. You're so wonderful, Father God. There's so many words, Father God, that we can't even find them to describe how amazing you are, Father God. We just bless your name right now. We lift you up. Father God, you said that if you be lifted up, you would draw all men unto you. So today, Father God, we ask that you draw us, Father God. As we draw near to you, Father God, you draw near to us, Father God, because we want an experience that's going to last with you on today, Father God. We give you praise. We give you honor, Father God. We give you glory with our lives on today, Father God. And we ask that today you do a new thing. You do a new thing in every single one of us, Father God. Have your complete and total way, Father God. We bless you. I plead the blood of Jesus over everybody here, everybody listening under the sound of my voice, Father God, everybody watching, Father God. We plead the blood of Jesus, and we ask that you do what only you can do on today, Father God. We give you glory, we give you honor, and we give you praise, Father God. And it's in the mighty name of Jesus that we pray. Amen and amen. Now, wherever you are, just stand and lift your hands as we go before God and praise because he is an amazing God, a sovereign God that reigns over everything, over this earth, Father God. He reigns over our emotions, over our circumstances, over everything we're going through. He reigns and he's dependable. Hallelujah. We just thank you, God, for being so amazing. Hallelujah. Sing, my God reign, my God reign, our God reign, our God reign. Lord, you reign above every name. Sing, my God reign, my God reign, our God reign, our God reign. Lord, you reign above every name with power, with power and majesty. Dominion, authority, you reign. Oh, sing with power, power and majesty. Dominion, authority, you reign. Oh, sing, my God reign. My God reign. Our God reign. Our God reign. Lord, you reign above every name. Sing my God reigns, our God reigns, Lord you reign above every name with power, power and majesty, dominion and authority, you reign, oh with power, with power and majesty, dominion authority, you reign, oh, sing my God reign, my God reign. our God reign. Our God reign, Lord you reign above every name, sing my God reign, my God reign. Our, God reign. our God reign, Lord you reign above every name, with power and majesty. To me, you, you reign one more time with power, with power and majesty, dominion, authority. You reign, oh, sing, my God, reign, my God, reign, our God, reign, our God, reign, Lord, you reign above every name. My God reigns, our God reigns, Lord you reign above every name, sing over, over my circumstance, giving me another chance, you reign, one more time, sing over, over my circumstance. 
circumstance giving me another chance you reign oh sing my god reign our god reign lord you reign above every name sing my god reign our god reign lord you reign above every name sing over my circumstance giving me another chance you reign that's what you do for us father sing over giving me another chance you reign let's say that again he's over over my circumstance giving me another chance you reign oh hallelujah you reign you reign you reign it's real simple everybody come on let's lift that up you reign you reign you reign you are master you reign you reign you reign you reign over everything god you reign you reign you reign you reign hallelujah you are master you reign you reign you reign one more time let's lift that up you reign you reign you still hallelujah 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 oh god you reign oh god you reign you reign you reign you reign over my circumstances over everything i'm going through god you reign you reign you still you still you glory God because you reign we give you glory God because you reign you reign over our lives God hallelujah you're a good good father you're a good good father you're a good good father hallelujah we thank you for that you reign God we thank you for that you can reign over everything that's going on with us god hallelujah and we could depend on you to fix it god hallelujah you're a fixer god hallelujah you're dependable god hallelujah because when you have that much rain over everything you could do anything hallelujah we serve a god that can do anything hallelujah can do any and everything hallelujah god we give you glory for being who you are our sovereign god hallelujah and Father, we love you. Hallelujah. We love you so much, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're worthy, God. And we just want to let you know how much we love you on today. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. I worship and adore you Just want to tell you Lord, I love you More than anything Yeah I love you, Jesus I worship and adore you just want to tell you Lord I love you more than anything 
I lift my hands in total adoration unto you. You reign on the throne, for you are God and God alone. Because of you, my cloudy days are gone. And I can sing to you this song I just want to say that I love you more than anything Come on everybody sing I lift I lift my hands in total adoration to you For you reign for you are God, you are God and God alone. Because of you, my cloudy days are gone. And I can sing to you this song. I just want to say that I love you more than anything. One more time, everybody, sing. Sing, I live. I live my hands in total adoration to you for you reign on the throne for you are God you are God and God alone because of you my cloudy days are gone and I can sing to you this song I just want to say that I love you more than anything. Hallelujah. We sing. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything sing i love you jesus i love you jesus i worship and adore you i worship and adore i just want to tell you just want to tell you that i love you than anything oh god sing i love you i love you jesus i worship and adore you i, and adore I just want to tell you just want to tell you that i love you and adore you I, adore I just want to tell you that I love you Lord more than anything Lord I love you Jesus I love you Jesus sing I love you Jesus
we can't make it without you lord we can't make it without you if that's real we can't make it without you 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 we love you Jesus 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 Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. From the bottom of our hearts, God. To the depths of our souls, God, we love you. I love you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Just worship. I love you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I love you, Jesus. You've been so good. You've been better than good. Hallelujah. You've been better than good to me. Oh, I love you. Oh, I love you, 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 Lord, I love you. You've been better than good to me. You've been better than good. You've made me worthy. Hallelujah. You've made me worthy, God. Hallelujah. You've made me righteous, God. So I love you, I love you, I love you, Lord. You've given me everything I need, oh God. To do your will, to do your purpose in this earth, Father God, I love you. I love you, Jesus. 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 God, we give you praise. God, we give you praise. God, we give you praise. We enter your gates with thanksgiving. We enter your courts with praise. Father, we lift up our voice on today, Lord God. And we pray even now, God, that you will send that anointing that causes teaching, preaching, and prophesying to be easy. Send that anointing, Lord, that causes yokes to be broken, burdens to be lifted. Send that anointing, God, that causes, Lord, the minds of your people to be settled. Send that anointing, God, that causes faith to come alive. We thank you and we praise you. We magnify you and we glorify you. In the matchless, wonderful name of Jesus Christ, we bless you on today. Listen, I'm Prophet Gonsolin. And I want to welcome you to Kingdom Builders Church. Thank you for being with us. Greetings and God bless you. Listen, before we get into this word, I want you to like the broadcast. Share it. Let somebody know that we are on, the, on live, on Facebook Live. And I want you to just get your Bible and get your communion because we're going to be taking communion at the end of this service. But I believe that before we offer up communion to the Lord, that we want to hear what God has to say. I just believe. And every word that God speaks is volumes to our lives. I believe that it adds to our lives. And I want to welcome you again to this broadcast. And I just believe in my believer that God is going to speak to you on today. Do you believe that? Amen and amen. If you have your Bibles, turn with me quickly 
to the 63rd Psalm. The 63rd Psalm. The 63rd Psalm. And the Bible says, O oh God, you are my God. Early will I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh longs for you. In a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. So I have looked for you in the sanctuary to see your power and your glory because your loving kindness is better than life. My lips shall praise you. Thus, I will bless you while I live. I will lift up my hands in your name. My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness. And my mouth shall praise you with joyful lips. And when I remember you on my bed, I meditate on you in the night watches. Because you have helped me and been my help. Therefore, in the shadows of your wings, I will rejoice. My soul follows close behind you. Your right hand upholds me. If you will turn your Bibles quickly to Psalms 27. Psalms 27. Psalms 27. Stay the same. Stay the same. Psalm 27. Psalms 27. The Lord is the light, my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? And when the wicked came against me to eat up my flesh, my enemies and my foes, they stumbled and fell. Though an army may encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though wars may rise against me, in this I will be confident. One thing I have desired of the Lord. That will I seek. That I may dwell in the house of the Lord. All the days of my life. To behold the beauty of the Lord. And to inquire in his temple. We want to continue this series that we began called first things first and I want to say to you that on last time that we were here that we said that we have to prioritize our pursuits in this message we want to keep the same foundation but we want to change the same God said to us the last time that it's important for us to prioritize our pursuits. This time God is saying to us that he wants us to pay the price of pursuing. There's a price that must be paid to pursue God. Life is a system of choices. And the choices that we make in life will determine the level of life we're going to live. I cannot consistently make bad choices and expect to live a good life. Likewise, I cannot consistently make good choices and accept a life that is not as good as the choices I have made. Are you with me? 
so the single greatest choice you will ever make in your entire life is to pursue God to pursue God is a choice it's a matter of choice it's a choice that matters and every other choice becomes minute to that choice the last time we were here we talked about how when we consider the concept of first things first we talked about how it's important to keep the first thing first and whatever is first must be kept first whatever is first must remain in the position of being first and because God was before the beginning he is first and because God was before anything that was he must remain first in order for anything or anyone to lose that title first there must be something or someone that comes along and pushes them nudges them removes them from first and because God cannot be nudged or moved because there is no greater than God there's no stronger than God there's no bigger than God there is no mightier than God because God is the greatest power and because God is the greatest God can't nothing or no one show up after him and replace him because God is somebody say God is because God is God and the last time I checked can't nobody be God but God not only can't nobody be God but God but can't nobody beat God are you hearing this so in order for God to lose his title first something bigger better stronger must come along and push him remove him bump him from his first in order for there to be a comparison to God a competition with God there must first be something or someone that would fit the category of God and because God is in the category all by himself can I see that again and because God is in a category all by himself there is no compatible comparison to him so because there is no one in God's category there can never be a competition a comparison so God will forever remain first and since God is in a category all by himself there is no entity no person no angel no demon no power no principality that can replace him the last time we were here we we said that there are two things that must be factored into any and every pursuit we said that anytime you get ready to pursue anything or anyone there are two things that must be factored in to every pursuit and we said that those two things were importance and value because no one pursues anything that is not important and no one pursues anything that has no value 
So before you pursue anything, I must ask myself, how important is it to me? How valuable is it to me? In other words, I have to count the cost. So I'm counting the cost. What will this pursuit of God cost me? Some pursuits simply are not worth it. There are some pursuits. There are some things that we can pursue that is simply not worth our time. I don't have the time to pursue this. Uh, it will cost me too much money to pursue this. It will cost me too much peace to pursue this. So the argument now is, did I say argument? Because sometimes we can pursue arguments and attempt to prove our point. And in the midst of trying to prove our point, which most times is pointless, we win the argument but lose the relationship. We prove the point of our argument but yet at the same time lose the promotion lose the advancement lose the influence you prove the point but you end up by yourself after you've proven the point so at the end of the day it's just you left with your point you find yourself by yourself just you and the dog just you and the cat just you and the television just you and your point so your point now begins to prophesy to you that you pursued the wrong thing stay with me some things you should just not pursue are you with me some things you should just let it pass look at your name and say let it pass from arguments to anointings there is a price that goes along with the pursuit what is the price of pursuing God what will it cost you to pursue God you know, I'm reminded of Matthew chapter 8. And in Matthew chapter 8, the Bible says that after Jesus came down from the mountain, that a great crowd pursued him. And one of those pursuers was a lepers. One of the men that pursued Jesus in Matthew chapter 8 had leprosy what did his pursuit cost him and the Bible says that Jesus touched him and he was made whole somebody say I just need Jesus to touch me to be made whole stay with me it cost the man with leprosy, his condition. He pursued Jesus. Jesus touched him. And the Bible says that he lost his condition because he pursued Christ. Something, there is something that God wants you to lose that you're only going to lose after the pursuit. There's something that you're going to lose yet gain after the pursuit. There are some things that God will not release into your life until after the pursuit. See, some of us are trying to gain without pursuing. And we have promised God 
empty promises. We say stuff like, if you do this for me, God, I'll, I'll live for you. If you do this for me, God, I'll serve you. But God told me to tell those that are watching me, you're going to gain it after the pursuit. There's some things that you want God to take away from your life, out of your life, deliver you from. God told me to tell you, it's going to take place after the pursuit. After God is pursued by you. God is going to subdue the thing that is pursuing you. After you pursue God, God is going to subdue the thing that's pursuing you. Can I give you a revelation? God is leading what is pursuing you into an ambush. So God says it, by the Spirit of God that if you will pursue me, that thing that is trying to pursue you will follow you into the pursuit and God said I'll ambush it in the pursuit the thing that is trying to pursue you sickness, disease, illness, famine lack of finances, lack of faith instability depression suicide, murder Hatred, greed, prejudice, whatever is pursuing you. God said, if you will pursue me, I'll ambush you. Do you receive that? So the Bible says that after healing the man with leprosy, the Bible says now that Jesus goes to Capernaum. And when he gets to Capernaum, there's another man pursuing him called a centurion and the bible says that this centurion now he pursues christ and he tells christ he says my servant is home sick paralyzed the servant is paralyzed but the centurion is pursuing god can i give you a revelation can i prophesy to you it does not matter what is paralyzed in your life. If you pursue God, God will remove the condition. The Bible says that this centurion now, he tells Jesus, you don't have to come to my house where my paralyzed servant is. All I need you to do is speak the word. If you speak the word only, my servant will be healed. And the Bible says that Jesus spoke the words and his servant was healed. What did it cost him to pursue Christ? It cost him the condition of his servant. What is it going to cost you? Can I submit to you that pursuing God is a prize? It is the reward to commune with him is a reward stay with me and those who will pay the price of pursuit will be rewarded sometimes the price will be time Sometimes God will tell you the price I want you to pay is your time. Please stay with me. Sometimes the price that God wants you to pay is finances. Money. Sometimes the price that God wants you to pay is your talents, your skills, your abilities. God said, bring me your abilities. Bring me your talents. Bring me your education. Bring me your know-how. Sometimes the price that you will pay is your family. Sometimes the price that you will pay to pursue God is your friends. For some of us, the price you will pay is everything. Some of us, will have to give up everything to pursue God. 
one of the things that caused David to stay on top with God was that David understood how to pursue God. David had a heart that pursued God. He not only pursued God with all his heart, but he had a heart to pursue God. Even in his failure, he pursued God. Can I prophesy something to you today? That God does not just want you to pursue you, pursue him in your successes. But he wants you to have enough faith, tenacity to pursue him even in your failures. If I fail God, yet will I still pursue him. David understood the principle, watch this now, of the one thing. David understood. He, he had a revelation of the one thing principle and gained power through that revelation. Every time God gives you revelation, God is giving you power. Can I say that again? Every time God gives you revelation, he's giving you power. David had revelation of the one thing. He understood if I place the one thing above anything, I may not gain everything, but I'll gain God. And when I gain God, I've gained everything. That revelation of the one thing. What is God saying to you today? God told me to tell those that are watching and that shall watch that he wants to give you a revelation of the one thing. It's the one thing revelation. Somebody say the one thing revelation. Put it in the comments. The one thing revelation. He said, look what he says in the text. One thing have I desired of the Lord. That will I seek. One thing. Somebody say one thing. David said, one thing have I desired of the Lord. And that one thing will I seek. What's the one thing, David? That I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. We can drop the mic on that. But he says, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. David knew that the one thing that would affect everything. So he was willing to give everything. He was willing to pay the price for the one thing. What are you willing to pay the price for? What is the one thing? That God is commanding you to pay the price for. Somebody say the one thing. David had a revelation of who God was and where God was. David understood that he knew that besides me pursuing God. Besides me pursuing the Lord of my salvation. He understood that besides me, there is nothing. There is nothing beside me that would hinder me. David understood. He had a revelation that what he knew about God mattered. Somebody said what you perceive about God matters. What you know about God matters. Stay with me. David not only knew who God was, watch this now, but David knew who he was. Can I get your revelation? Some of us know about God, but don't know about ourselves. Come on. 
David knew through the text he knew that being outside of God's house would cause challenges for him who am I preaching to who am I prophesying to that every time you get outside of God's house challenges show up I'm prophesying to somebody even now anytime you get out from amongst the anointing of God the presence of God the place of God's dwelling challenges show up David knew that anytime I get outside of God's house challenges are presented towards me he knew that what awaited him outside of God's house was challenging David knew that outside of God's house there were some things awaiting him he knew that the cry of the people was awaiting him he was king he knew that the craziness of his enemies was outside of God's house waiting for him so he knew the cry of the people was, was, was waiting he knew that the craziness of his enemies were, 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 were raiding but more than anything David knew that the cravings of his flesh was outside of God's house waiting for him who am I preaching to outside of God's house you'll find the cry of the people you'll find the craziness of your enemies and you'll find the cravings of your flesh David knew if I could just stay in this presence if I could just stay in the house of God long enough I can gain victory on the inside that will help me prepare me for what's on the outside if I can gain the strength I need on the inside I can overcome everything that's on the outside he knew that everything that was waging war against him on the outside could be conquered on the inside so if I could just sit in the house of the Lord where I know God is I can combat everything that's trying to conquer me David knew that God was spirit catch this revelation he, he knew that God is spirit and he knew that if I'm going to pursue God I have to pursue God in the spirit David knew that any attempt to pursue God in the flesh would result in failure. We've tried it and we know it to be true. That any time we try to pursue God in the flesh, the result will be failure. Please stay with me. He knew that I am more spiritual when I'm in the spirit. I am most spiritual when I'm in God's house. So if I can remain in the place of the spirit long enough with God, I know my reward will show up. And my reward, watch this now, it's not more money. My reward is not more men to fight my enemies. My reward is not even a greater throne a greater kingdom but my reward is God alone God alone God alone God alone God alone God alone that should be the echo of your heart I want God alone I need God all by himself David put his one thing first and pursued it beyond anything and the concept of one thing first is to find that one thing and make that one thing first forever like David watch this now Mary 
found her one thing. David didn't have a monopoly on the one thing. There were others in the Bible that understood the principle, the law of the one thing. Mary, the Bible says, had a revelation of the one thing. Look what the Bible says in Luke chapter 10, beginning at verse 38. Look what it says. It says, now it happened as they went that he, speaking of Jesus, entered a certain village and a certain woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary who also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was distracted with, with much serving, the Bible says. And she approached him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Therefore, tell her to help me. And Jesus answered and said to her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and troubled about many things. Watch this, because verse 42 is critical for our understanding. He says, but one thing. Somebody say, but one, but one thing. But one thing is needed. He says, you are troubled about many things, but one thing is needed. Martha, you're missing the one thing. Mary is not serving like you're serving, but Mary has served to me the one thing. You are doing, Martha, what you think I need you to do. But Martha, but Mary is doing what she know I want her to do. She's serving me the one thing. He says, but one thing is needed. And Mary has chosen that good part. Can I get your revelation? That one thing will always be that good part. And that one thing will always set you apart. That one thing. He says, which will not be taken from her. Did you catch that? It was the revelation of the one thing that separated Paul from the rest. Paul, an apostle of the Lord, did not walk with Jesus, did not eat with Jesus, did not sit with Jesus, did not have afternoon conversations with him but that one thing separated him from all of those that did look what Paul says in Philippians 3 and 13 he says brethren I count not myself to have apprehended hello but this one thing I do Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Paul said, but this one thing like David and like Mary, Paul had a revelation of the one thing. See, in this generation, we are so busy trying to accumulate a massive amount of revelation to where we are forgetting and missing the one thing revelation. What is the one thing that God says you should, you should focus on that is going to catapult you above everything? Mary found that one thing. David found that one thing. Paul found that one thing. The question now is, have you found that one thing? that symbolizes the amalgamation, the accumulation 
the combination of your pursuit of God. When you find that one thing, you will have done one. I said, when you find that one thing, you will have done one, then one. That one thing will cause you to win. You have won the battle only after you have found that one thing. The Bible says, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all who is above all and through all and in all. You've got to have faith in the one thing. You've got to put your confidence in the one thing. The one who created you and called you. The one who restored you and rescued you. The one who saved you and preserved you. The one who is the, the savior of your soul. The redeemer of your life. The one who save you but the one who granted you the grace to gain life did I say life because the Bible calls out to us can I close with this this one thing the number one reason the single most important purpose of Christ is to grant you eternal life with eternal life also comes that more abundant life in the earth so once I get to heaven I have eternal life but Jesus said I have come that you might have life in life more abundantly here on earth the here and now so the Bible now can I just draw your attention as we get ready to close the Bible now gives us an example of the one thing here in the book of Mark chapter 10 Mark chapter 10 the Bible lays out for us this one person that pursues Jesus uh, probably the greatest example of the one thing throughout the entire Bible anytime you pursue Jesus anytime you come in contact with him anything that he tells you says to you watch this now it will always be loaded Jesus will test you and God we trust everyone else examine them thoroughly that's Jesus so the Bible talks about this young man that the Bible calls young this young rich ruler this rich young ruler the Bible calls him and I'll pick it up in, in Mark chapter 10 verse 17 it says and when he was gone forth into the way speaking of Jesus there came one running, somebody say pursuing, and kneeled to him. Can I pause there for a moment? For you to be rich, young, and a ruler, and you're pursuing, do you know how much humbleness it takes for a rich, young ruler to pursue anything? Because rich folks, for the most part, their riches, that's their God. They don't bow down to nobody. Don't you know who I am? I'm the rich young ruler. My wisdom precedes me. My fame precedes me. I have influence. I have gained what 90% of my generation has not the ability to gain. I'm a young, rich ruler. Watch this. The Bible says, kneel to him and ask him, good master, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? 
And Jesus said to him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one. That is God. Thou knowest the commandments. And when Jesus said, Thou knowest the commandments, he was not saying, Do you know about the commandments? Do you know of the commandments? That word know there is the word in the Greek, edo, which means know it as in to keep it. He says, do not commit adultery. Do not kill. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Do not defraud. Honor thy mother and thy father. And he answered and said unto him, Master, all these have I observed from my youth. Now, I could just imagine this rich young ruler saying this to Christ with a whole lot of pride. Do you know the commandments? Ah, I've kept them since my youth. He says now, then Jesus beholding him, loved him. See, Jesus will always commend you before he corrects you. He commends him, but correction is on the way. The Bible says, Jesus beholding him loved him and said unto him one thing thou lackest there's that one thing principle again one thing thou lackest you're young you're rich you're a ruler you have done what 90% of the people in your generation has not been able to do you to be commended in other words you are a success he says now but he says one thing thou lackest go thy way sell whatever thou hast Jesus tests him he gives this young rich ruler an opportunity to subject his opulence to the will of God he says now watch this he says go thy way sell whatever thou hast in other words depart from your influence depart from your status depart from your reputation depart from everything that you count worthy everything that you count worth something depart from that he says I want you to go and the party says he said and sell whatsoever thou hast and give to the poor and thou shalt have treasure in heaven and come take up the cross and follow me in other words I want you to depart from everything that has made you who you are sell it give it to the poor less fortunate those that have real needs those that cannot pay you back. And then once you've done that, you've then paid the price to further pursue me. And he was, the Bible says, and he was sad at that saying and went away grieved for he had great possessions. Watch this. And Jesus looked around about and said unto his disciples, how hardly shall they that have riches enter into the kingdom of God. And the disciples were astonished at his words. But Jesus answered again and said unto them, Children, how hard is it for them that trust in their riches to enter into the kingdom of God. It is easier for the camel to go through the eye of the needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God and they were astonished out of measure saying amongst themselves who then can be saved they were saying that because everyone around him was rich everyone around them trusted in their riches are you hearing what I'm preaching just like today 
Jesus was not speaking when he looked when he spoke to that young rich young ruler he was not speaking to a man he was speaking to a generation of thinking he was speaking to a mindset that chases success and Jesus looked upon them saying with men it is impossible but not with God for with God all things are possible then Peter began to say unto him lo we have left all and have followed thee and say and Jesus answered and said what Peter perceived in the spirit realm what Jesus was saying you got to give it all up so before Jesus could say it Peter said lo we have left all and have followed thee pursued thee and Jesus answered and said verily I say unto you there is no man that hath left houses or brothers or sisters or fathers or mothers or wife or children or land for my sake and the gospels but he shall receive an hundredfold now in this time house and brethren and sisters and mothers and children and land with persecution and in the world to come eternal life did you catch the theme of the text this young ruler had everything yet he subjected himself to Christ pursued him watch this now he does not say grant me eternal life he's pursuing that one thing somebody say one thing he's pursuing the one thing he has yet to gain I've gained opulence influence notoriety fame I'm young I'm rich I'm a ruler everything this generation is seeking after he does not say Lord grant me eternal life he says tell me what I must do to have eternal he understood sowing and reaping some of us don't have the revelation of this rich young ruler he understood how dare I ask God for anything without giving God anything he was willing to pay a price but did not want to pay the price he thought Jesus was going to say sell half of what you have the Bible says to whom much is given much is required sell all your stuff give it to the poor if he would have had a real revelation of sowing and reaping, he would have known whatever I sow into the kingdom of God, God will cause me to reap. If Jesus could grant him eternal life, didn't he think that same Jesus that had the power to grant him eternal life could bring him back everything he lost? Didn't he have a revelation of the Job experience? Job lost everything but yet regained everything while holding still to his integrity and his character. Some of us have gained, but you've lost your integrity. You've lost your character. Your word don't mean nothing. Your words, you are bankrupt in integrity. Bankrupt in character. Hello, hello, hello. The, cons the theme of the text is that Jesus tested the integrity of his heart because your, the voice of your heart will speak louder than the voice of your mouth any day where your treasure is your heart is also Jesus commanded him to sell when he tested the integrity of his heart This young ruler had conquered every natural realm that there was to be conquered. He had gained wealth, 
prominence, influence, and half of the time. He was, he was more than a conqueror. He had conquered those realms. But the one realm he could not conquer was the realm of the releasing of the heart. Where your treasure is, your heart is also. Listen, I want to pray with you. Father God, I pray even now for those that are watching. And I pray, God, that they would pass their test. Whatever their test is, Lord, I pray as a prophet of God that they would pass their test. Whatever you are asking them for, I pray, Lord, that they would not be like this rich young ruler and fail, their, that they would understand the power of the one thing. What is the one thing, Lord, that you're asking them for? What is the one thing, Lord, that you want them to focus on? I pray even now, God, that every iron gate that is withholding their one thing, revelation, be released to them even now. I pray even now, Lord, that you will send angelic assistance to help them understand that one thing. Speak to them through the power and the voice of the Holy Ghost what that one thing is withholding nothing withholding nothing withholding nothing withholding nothing I hear that in my in my spiritual ear withholding God said withholding nothing withholding nothing what will you withhold from God God said I'm going to ask it's for you to respond Listen, we are praying for you. We love you. We want to connect with you. Send us a message. Like, follow our page, Kingdom Builders Church. Share it. Get the word out. God bless you for those that were there and that viewed the SEA Symposium on last week. God bless you tremendously. That was just the beginning. Listen, the next SEA Symposium will be on February the 18th at 5 p.m. Same place, 1910 South College Road, Hampton Inn and Suites, Lafayette, Louisiana. Be there in person. Be there on time. See a symposium. We're opening up our spiritual eyes, seeing what God wants us to see, how to develop your spiritual eye, how to see in the spirit. February the 18th. And next month, March, same day, 18th. We'll be back in the same place, same time, continuing our assignment. Listen, don't go away. We're going to take communion. Grab your elements. We're coming right back. And we are going to celebrate God's holy communion with God. Before we do communion, I want to challenge you to sow a seed into the kingdom of God. Sow your greatest seed. Pay your tithe. Be faithful. First fruits. It's time to sow first fruits. Whatever vow we've made, let's be faithful to God. And I promise you, God will be faithful to us. Get your, get your elements ready. It's time for communion. Well, God bless you again. I pray that you gather your elements. I just believe, I hope, and pray that something that was said on today blessed your life. If you have your elements, go ahead and grab them quickly. Uh, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, beginning at the 23rd verse, it says, For I have received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you. And the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death 
until he comes. Therefore, whoever eats of this bread and drinks of this cup of the Lord's in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he who eateth and drink in an unworthy manner eat and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this reason, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened by the Lord, that we may not be condemned with the world. The Bible says that on that day, Jesus picked up the bread. He broke it and he gave thanks and he instructed his disciples on that day to take the bread that was broken. He said, this bread represents my body, which is going to be broken for you. He said, I want you to eat it likewise on today. I say unto you what he said unto them on that day, eat all of the bread. Bible says likewise after the supper he took the cup and he said this cup represents the blood my blood is going to be shed for you on that day he instructed his disciples to drink all of what was in the cup and on today likewise I say to you drink what's in your cup Now, Father God, I thank you now for those people. Your people, God, who have taken your holy communion in remembrance of your death until you come. Bless them now in the matchless, wonderful name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. And we say once again, thank you for your sacrifice. We love you. We praise you always and forever. And until next time, See you, same place, same time. May God's righteousness go before you, and may his glory be your rear God is our prayer. You stay in God, and I promise you, God will stay in you. God bless you. See you later. Bye-bye.